Hi, my name is Elliot and I believe I have a solution to the combination problem of panpsychism. So essentially I believe the best way to solve the problem of panpsychism is to avoid it. And this is done by essentially admitting that there is no true combination of parts. And while this sounds like a cop-out, it really does make sense. It, it's completely coherent and it, it makes sense. Uh, so let's think about it this way. So if you look at a bar of gold, right? You, our eyes are not capable of perceiving the small parts. We can only perceive it above a certain size threshold. Um, we only see it as a macroscopic thing. We only see a bar of gold. We can't see the atoms that make it up. Same way if we look at our hand, we can't see the cells, even though they're much larger than atoms. We, we can only see the hand. And I think the mind works the same way. So really thoughts and our consciousness is made up of all these tiny parts. Um, but if introspectively, our mind doesn't have the faculties to perceive anything smaller than the size of a thought, then we would only ever perceive them as single unified experiences, just as a single continuous phenomenology. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, that that solves the combination problem. Um, obviously, it comes with a few questions like, how can these small parts work together to create a singular thing if they are not truly singular? And the answer is, the same thing happens in our cells, in our, in our hands, you know, they really are a collection of cells. They, they aren't truly a single unified thing, but in a sense, on a different scale, they really are. You know, a hand can still slap someone. A bar of gold can still knock someone out. Um, you know, it, they, they come with a whole set of properties that are different depending on the level you're looking at them. And I believe the mind works the same way. You know, thoughts are still singular things, even though truly they are made up of small parts. The same way your hand is really truly a singular thing, in the same way it is also made up of small parts. Um, and I, I emailed uh, David Chalmers about this and he said that his largest problem was that it requires such an upheaval in thought regarding our mind if it's true. And I don't believe that's the case because, you know, knowing that our hand is made up of small parts doesn't really change anything about how it works. The function is exactly the same. Um, Nothing, nothing changes. All, all, all that happens is we un have a better understanding of its constitution. And I believe the mind is similar. You know, once we understand how the mind works, nothing changes really functionally. Um, we still have a phenomenological experience. We, we still have unified thoughts. We just would understand that they are made up of small parts and that, you know, well, a result of that is that the combination problem is avoided. And in a sense, you know, there is a solution. All we have to do is accept this version of reality um, and there is no combination problem at all. And I suppose a question could be like, how, how do these small parts work together? And it's just, yeah, cohesion, co cohesiveness. So the, these small parts work together in, in a way that, you know, atoms work towards the same telos. You know, these atoms make up the gold bar in the same way these small parts of mind make up um they, they all work together because they're arranged in such a way you know we are just a, a rare arrangement of atoms at the end of the day one that's capable of computational thought um we're arranged in, in a computational state um which is why we're capable of you know intelligent thought and consciousness and you know i think there's no reason to assume that we would have the functionality to perceive these small parts built in and if that's the case then it's just like a human being, there's no reason to assume that we would have knowledge of our true nature as being made up of tiny little cells. The mind works exactly the same way. The only difference is that science has developed microscopes and ways of seeing these tiny cellular components that make us up, which strangely doesn't change our way of viewing ourselves as a singular thing. But science doesn't have a way of, you know, observing mind, of observing consciousness. Um, so there's no way of seeing these smaller parts that make it up as well. In a sense, you could say there is, in that we can look at neurons and know that, you know, a thought is made up of multi multiple neurons. Um, but that's on a larger scale than we're talking about with panpsychism. So, yeah, I think that works fairly well and is a fairly coherent theory um, in terms of a solution to the combination problem. Because if you think of it that way, it, there is, it's not possible for there to be a problem of combination because there isn't a combination at all. So yeah, I'm interested to help people think. Uh, yeah, that's it, thanks.